Got a question here from Dave Crew. Dave says, Robbie, I've got no knowledge of programming, but I'd like to learn. Where would you recommend I start? What language would be good uh, as a starting language? I know so little about programming, I don't even know what I, I would use it for. You often talk about Bosch script on, uh, scripts on the show. Would that be a good place to start? So Dave, your question is pretty wide open. Because you don't really know what you want to do with the programming, sounds like you're just looking for a bit of an adventure uh, in you know, challenging yourself. So it depends, I guess, whether you want these to be applications that you run on your computer, whether you want these to be web-based applications, which are nice. I like programming for the web because then it's uh, you know, cross-system compatible very, very easy. Um, so it really depends on what you want to do. If you want to get into, I mean, because you've got no experience, no knowledge of programming, you say, you kind of want to start with the basics. So if you're looking at going the web end, then I would start with basic HTML, but coding it. Like actually understand how to create headers, how to create, uh, uh, start with, let's start with, you know, doing uh, XML compliant carriage returns and, and actually formatting using uh, CSS and things like that. And then get into tables, I think is a good starting, starting place for HTML. And then once you're good at tables, once you understand what a TR and a TD is and how they function and how you can make uh, advanced tables with call span and row span, once you get to that point, then start looking at divs and spans and things like that. So get HTML under your belt so that you understand the output and then start working in a, in a server-side language, something that's going to interpret, uh, such as PHP, which is my preferred language for web-based. If, on the other hand, you're not looking at going the web route, and web being, you know, you're not limited to just internet or web pages. I create a lot of applications at work for, like, that are, are run through PHP applications, but they're actually run through cron jobs. They're run through, uh, through Linux scripts and things like that. They actually are applications that run on the server or on the desktop. Um, but if you're looking to actually create GUI applications, like graphical user interface applications, like a program, then you might look at, uh, let's say, C++ or C++, something that will allow you to create something that's cross-platform compatible so that if you want to try compiling it for Windows, you can. If you want to try compiling it for Linux, you can, or Mac, and just kind of play around with that. But I don't, I'm not a good resource for that because, as you know, I'm not a GUI programmer. So, um, And then your, your question about Bosch, that's kind of like the Linux equivalent, and forgive me for being so lay terms for those of you who are in the know, but Bosch is kind of like the Linux equivalent here, Dave, to what you would say DOS is to, uh, to Windows. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, it's the black screen where you, you type in your commands. So a Bosch script is basically like the equivalent of a batch file uh, in, in Windows or DOS. Um, it's basically like a, a, a list of commands that are able to run through Bosch. And so you can do a lot of really cool things. So it, it's great for, you know, speeding up the processing of, of things that you do often, you know, where you have to type in commands over and over and over again because you use it so often. I use, uh, I, I've made Bosch scripts even with our show every week. After the show is broadcast, uh, I copy the AVI file, actually, and then I run this Bosch script on it that I created, and it exports from the video every 15 seconds, it saves a screenshot. So that's what you get the, uh, the screenshots from the animated icon uh, for each episode and things like that. So that's automatically created using a Bosch script. So you can do so much with that, but it is strictly just a scripting language that is uh, based on Bosch commands, so things that you would type in the terminal, say, uh, that kind of idea. But there are some advanced things that you can do with that. So it depends on where you want to go, what you want to do. Um, if, you're, if you want me to be able to be he uh, helpful for you, I think that the best thing for you to do is to look at web-based languaging uh, because that's, you know, that's my forte. Uh, but if, you know, if you're looking, you know, there's, there's communities out there that are going to support any of those uh, architectures and you'll be able to find help with, with anything like that. When I started programming, I started thinking al along these lines. I started thinking, what could I make of a program? Like, what could I program that would be useful to either myself or to somebody else? Think of something that hasn't been done or something that could speed things up for, for you. Is there something that you do on your computer that's really not efficient right now that you'd like to do something uh, to, to resolve? That may be your starting place. That might be your deciding factor right there. 
Jagaz saying that uh, it's also good to learn Java, and even admitting that hates to say that, but Java is a good language to learn. And I can see the advantage to using Java in that it is cross-platform uh, cross compatible. Definitely, there's a lot that you can do with it, and there's you know there are good Java applications out there, so makes it easy for testing and things like that. Alba Taylor mentioning that if you learn programming basics with one, such as C++, you can easily switch to the others later. And definitely true, and that's kind of why I, yeah, that's why I say start with HTML and then work your way to PHP. Because you'll, you'll learn the basics, and then you can really excel at the other stuff. If you jump right into PHP, it'll be extremely confusing because you don't understand the base of the output, which is HTML. Because what PHP sends to the browser is generally just HTML. So we want to understand, you know, the egg before the chicken. <laughs> what came first, HTML or PHP?